coming back way from home over here. This is our fourth annual event. Tonight, we will recognize the hard work and dedication performed by students and teachers alike. As we honor our outstanding performance within department areas, we'll bring up our students and recognize them. Before we begin, I'd like to welcome high school senior Ben Parsons to sing our national anthem. Ben. Children can come. 
Maria Duran, are you here? Greg Harris, Jason Littleton, Don Rankin, and Dave Smith. Would you please give them more round of applause? Now I'd like to have Dr. Fred Radical come up and introduce our school board student representative and honor him. Our school board representative this year from Hermiston High School is Mr. Nathan Hay. Please come on forward, Nathan. Let's give him a big round of applause. Nathan has done a great job of serving the Hermiston School Board. Uh, throughout the year, he's uh, been asked to come once a month to Hermiston School Board business meetings to report on kind of what's going on at the high school. He's done so with energy, with verb, with excitement, enthusiasm, and we've appreciated uh, his integrity and the way that he does that reporting and his positive outlook and energy. So we will have this plaque for him at a later time. Mr. Nathan Hayden. And I would be followed by the Agriculture Department, Ms. Leah Smith. Could I please have Hannah Walker and Shandy Britt to the stage? So I have two awards this evening, an Upperclassman Agricultural Sciences Student Award and an Underclassman Agricultural Sciences Award. We'll start with Shandy. Shandy in uh, Agricultural Sciences learns and practice skills that prepare them for a diverse post-high school education and training opportunities. Our recipient of this award has taken nine courses from our department in her high school career. Her current cumulative GPA is a 3.6 and has numerous dual credits both within our program and others in the high school. Beyond the classroom, she has an, has been an excellent teacher's assistant and motivator to others. Within the agriculture curriculum, she has also taken part in our FFA organization. FFA, as a career and technical student organization, is much more than a club. She has taken full advantage of all opportunity for hands-on learning and content application. As a Hermiston FFA officer, she has honed her leadership and personal skills in real-world environments while setting an excellent example to her peers and community. Shandy has a strong supervised Ag Experience project in market animal production and rodeo, leading her to achieve her Oregon State FFA degree in 2014. She has participated in many events at the local, state, and national level, justifying her hard work in school and the FFA. On top of it all, tonight she will receive her stroll for the Agriculture Sciences Program of Study. And lastly, beyond each accomplishment and goal Shandy has reached, we would like to highlight her driven and focused attitude that led us to choose her as the 2015 recipient of the Agriculture Sciences Upperclassman Award. Our second student is uh, Ms. Hannah Walker. The Agriculture Science Underclassman Award is given to the most responsible and focused student in our classroom, who is also an active first-year FFA member. Currently maintaining a four-point GPA this entire year, Hannah is an excellent student who engages in class and follows through on all her endeavors. This individual has a strong supervised agriculture experience program already set up in market hog production and demonstrates a high level of leadership. This individual has been active in multiple career development events from parliamentary procedure to crops evaluation. She can always be counted on to participate in community service or giving a helping hand when asked. She has a positive attitude and always follows through on her commitments. She has shown great leadership skills this year as a green hand officer and helping with our teacher appreciation breakfast and ag in the classroom. Please help me congratulate our underclassman in agricultural sciences, Ms. Hannah Walker. I will now ask Ms. Maureen Crosley. Thank you. Good evening. The business department would like to recognize Maria Vila Embrice and Kimberly Gonzalez. 
Girls, would you come to the stage? The business department recognizes the achievements of two students who have shown tremendous performance in the field of business. Each business teacher nominates a representative who has shown strong academic performance and or excellent in the many business operations offered here at HHS. The students are evaluated on the variety of business courses taken, academic performance, and overall achievement in the business field. Any student nominated has shown great work ethic, attention to detail, and positive attitude towards learning. Our first award goes to the outstanding business student of the 2014-15 school year, Maria Avila Ambrice. This student must have taken courses from across the four programs of study in our area. In this case, our recipient has taken Accounting 1 and 2, Marketing 1, Business Applications Word Processing, Spreadsheets, and Presentations, business computing, she's been a business teacher's aide, and she's also completed Intro to Hospitality and Tourism. Serving as a member and vice president of our social media for our FCCLA club, she has attended state and national conferences, winning a silver medal in the category of entrepreneurship at the state leadership conference. She has also volunteered for numerous school and community activities and has given countless hours back to the community through her volunteer work and leadership endeavors. Maria has received college credit through our school's tech prep program in business, biology, education, and Spanish courses, and at the end of this semester, she will have accumulated over 60 college credits. In addition, she will receive recognition for being a business and management program completer in three of our four cluster skill sets, business management and administration, finance, and hospitality and tourism. Next year, she will be advancing her education either at Concordia University or Portland State, and she pursues her goal, she wants to become a certified public accountant. We are proud to recognize Maria Aguila Ambrice with the Outstanding Business Student Award. The next award goes to a student who has shown tremendous business leadership through a student-run business or organization. HSS offers several opportunities for students to apply what they are learning in the classroom, for example, the dog house, student store, our coffee smoothie business, Java Dog, concessions, or bulldog catering, just to name a few. Kimberly Gonzalez is this year's recipient of the Outstanding Business Leader Award for the Business Department. Kim has a number of accomplishments. She is one of the few students who has completed coursework in all four of the business and management areas marketing, finance, business administration, and hospitality. In addition, she has been active in career and technical student organizations. Kim has been involved in FCCLA all four years of high school. She was also a member of DECA during her freshman and sophomore years. Kim plans to attend Portland State University in the fall, and she will major in business. She is an extremely well-rounded future business leader, and the members of the business and management staff wish her the best of luck. Congratulations. I'd like to introduce Chris Demenu and Liz Marvin for the Careers and Technology Awards. Good evening. Uh, we are in the second year of a new program here at Hermiston High School, and that's a class that's being offered in the freshman year known as Career Choices. This is part of the new program here at Hermiston High School, where our goal is to help all students within the Hermiston School District system find a successful transition from our school setting to whatever that might be after high school. High School Plus is what we call it. Whether that be college, trade school, the employment field, or maybe even a pathway into the military. Our individual chosen tonight is Reed Middleton. Would Reed please come forward? We have chosen Reed Middleton because she sets herself apart for numerous academic and extracurricular activities this past year. As a freshman, Reed has always come to class with a clear focus on developing relationships with key community members actively researching post-high school opportunities and committing to her community by extensive community service. It is with that and with my great pleasure that I award Reed Middleton 
as the 2014-2015 Outstanding Careers in Technique. And an extended learning opportunity at Hermiston High School uh, can be something like juvenile tutor, where a student goes into uh, another building uh, in the district and tutors students. It can be also work experience and as well as internship. And our student this evening happens to do internship. So Cameron Cahill, could you please come up to the stage? into the semester, uh, Mrs. Fry called me and said that she had this fabulous student and we really needed to find an internship for me and uh, for him. And so Cameron filled out an internship application as we are very particular who we place in internships. Students have to have excellent attendance and we have to know that they're going to go to the internship at the end of the day for two periods of the day and, and not somewhere else. So Cameron was placed at uh, M2 Net Nerds, which was a perfect place for him because he was doing the Cisco certification, which just so happened that the owner of Net Nerds was doing that Cisco certification too. So they were, uh, I think there was an immediate bond. I learned more than I would ever use uh, with computers through Cameron's journals. He has to do daily, daily journals as part of his internship. And I've learned all kinds of things, and especially if I ever spill water on a keyboard, now I know I know what to do now. Unplug it and let it dry out. That's what I learned. So please congratulate Cameron for this. Good evening and welcome to my world of construction. I'm wearing this uh, hat and outfit for a reason. I'm here to advertise and promote a new class uh, here at the Hermerson High School through our construction and, and uh, woods program. I'm the program coordinator for the Columbia Basin Student Hobbit Program. We got a grant here at the beginning of last year or so, a year or so ago, to uh, start a building program. We have 12 students from around the area. It's called Columbia Basin Student Homes because uh, nine, or eight students are from uh, Hermerson, two from Stanfield, and two from Umatilla. They meet out every day at the home site and we're building a single family, modern, uh, energy efficient home. And it is spectacular if you haven't been out there. They, every day we work uh, hard with uh, uh, licensed contractors. That's where they're getting the uh, information from. And it's just a spectacular opportunity for students to learn everything about the construction business and have a real hands-on uh, uh, learning experience that they can do uh, every day. We also invite as many other programs as we can. We just uh, had the uh, landscaping class up there. They just put in the sod, and it is beautiful to have sod out there. We've been looking at dirt for quite a while. And in fact, at the beginning of the school year, we had a bare dirt field, and now we have an almost completed house. This first house is called Fieldstone One. We're having our big open house. This is the advertisement. The big open house of this uh, student built home is going to be June 1st to the public, 1 to 6.30. And it's out there on 895 West Angus Court Street. And if you haven't been out there on the other side of the uh, Armel RV uh, Middle School, but I'm telling you right now, you will be shocked when you go through this house to think that a high school student actually touched any part of it. It is that awesome. <laughs> the second reason I'm here and wearing this hat is to direct your thoughts to construction workers and to our construction woodworking student of the year. So if I could have Tasha Anderson come up here, please. <laughs> it is said that a picture can paint a thousand words, so I hope that in your mind you are picturing a positive image of a construction worker who is on time, efficient, 
A craftsman skilled with tools, safe, completes their work on time, takes pride in their job. These are just some of the traits our construction woodworking student of the year has demonstrated while she's been here at Hermson High School. So please help me recognize senior Tasha Anderson. Next up is Roger Berger. Can I please have Becky Alanis and Jocelyn Franco please come forward? substituting for Susie Cobb, who is currently working feverishly with her students that are not being uh, re represented tonight or awarded tonight in preparing our uh, banquet cake after this uh, short ceremony here. And she asked me to share these words about her students that were recognized. This year, Becky Polonese was selected as an outstanding family and consumer sciences student. Becky has taken nearly every family and consumer science class during her four years of high school including both early childhood and hospitality courses. Becky has also been an important part of FCCLA, the student leadership organization for students enrolled in family and consumer science classes. Becky is a two-time national qualifier and served two years as a chapter officer, including co-president during the 2014-15 school year. Congratulations, Becky. Jocelyn Franco is this year's Outstanding Human Resources and Education student. She excelled in coursework in early childhood and has exceeded the number of credits needed for the program of study completion. Her practicum was completed at the Head Start Child Development Center where she was loved by the children and staff alike. Head Start selected her as the Volunteer of the Month in October of 2014. Josie is interested in the career of working with children. Josie is also a six-year member of FCCLA becoming involved during, this, during her seventh grade year when she tagged along her um, older sister at the meetings and catering events. She has served as both a chapter officer at HHS and a state officer for Oregon FCCLA. Congratulations, Jocelyn. <laughs> Up next, introduce engineering, Tasha Larson. So, when looking for um, to give out this Outstanding Engineering Student of the Year Award, several thoughts came to my mind as to what I was expecting that student to look like, and here he is for you. On time, clearly communicates technical ideas to students who don't maybe necessarily get it all the way. That to me was extremely key as to what an outstanding engineering student looks like. Cameron demonstrated that on a daily basis, when I was looking and maybe when I was helping out another student, he's been a continual support in the classroom, helping out others, as well as in robotics, and just about every other aspect in engineering he's been interested in. Uh, as earlier, uh, stated, he has gone out on his own to find an internship. He came to me at the beginning of the year and was like, hey, school's fun, what else can I do? So he went and found himself an internship. So, Cameron. Nothing short of perfection. 
Uh, not only does he excel in all areas of reading and writing, but he is also qualified for state speech and debate for the last four years in a row. No matter what assignment has been given to him, his language arts teachers all agreed that the result was nothing short of excellence. So I'm pleased to announce that Timic has been awarded the Outstanding Student of the Year for Language Arts. Barkley, who is also a senior this year. She's gifted in all areas of language arts as well, including placing third in after dinner speaking this year for speech and debate. So. <laughs> and although she is fabulous at everything that she does, um, what's most impressive about Madeline is that she demonstrates this brilliance that is so hard to define. We, we talked for a long time as language arts department. How, how, do we, how do we explain what she's so brilliant at? Um, she's gracious, and I think that's probably the best word that we can use to describe her. She is a guiding force in the classroom where she's able to express her ideas and her, um, and her ideas are understood by her classmates, but at the same time, she does not make them feel um, insignificant or unimportant. And so that's a natural skill. I've told her many times that I think she's amazing and um, a natural teacher. So we appreciate her in the classroom. Outstanding student in the language arts, Madeline Burke. Now I'd like to welcome to the stage, <laughs> I'd like to welcome to the stage uh, Brenda Appleton to represent the mathematics. It's my pleasure to award two students tonight in the area of math. Can I please have Matthew Robin and Efren Leon Guerrero? Uh, the two awards we have to get out tonight, um, is, the first one is for the outstanding math student, and this is given to a student that has taken math in the areas of Algebra 1, Geometry, up through Algebra 2. Uh, Matthew is a sophomore this year, currently enrolled in Algebra 2, um, and Mr. Hawker nominated him for the award, and we all agreed that he was definitely on there. Uh, Matthew has outstanding grades in all three courses so far, very, very high A's. Um, and not only that, Mr. Hawker said that Matt has the ability to find a different way to solve a problem that not all students would, would think of. He doesn't always just solve it the standard way that we teach in the classroom, and that takes a lot of a skill to be able to do that on your own. And he said also that Matt is very good um, about helping other students in the classroom that may not get it as quickly as he might. He is very good about helping them understand the math and be successful in the classroom. So for our Outstanding Math Student Award this year, Matt is on. advanced math student. This is for a student that has continued the study of math beyond what's prior to graduate. Um, so I've had the pleasure of having after my class the last two years in pre-calculus and this year in calculus. Um, last year he had over 100 percent of both semesters in pre-calculus, like 102 and 103. Um, Efren is a very, very good math student. He learns math very quickly. He remembers math that he learned in freshman year. You do not have to ever worry about having to reteach Efren anything. Um, he came to me last year in the spring and he said, you know, Ms. Appleton, I want to get through Calculus BC next year as a junior. So typically what happens is that they take Calculus as a senior, it's a year-long course. Efren started it over the summer. I said, dude, here's your assignments, go. So he did uh, half of this stuff over the summer, came in the fall, gave me a big folder of assignments. He took his test, he finished Calculus 1 by semester 1, and then he moved on to take Calculus semester two online. So he basically self-taught himself both calculus courses this year and earned over 100%. Outstanding. Um, and the one thing I love about Efren is he not only is good at math, but you can tell he truly enjoys learning about math. He would come in to me after school and say, look at this cool thing I found online last night. So he would do research on topics that are above and beyond what we were teaching in the classroom. 
and then be able to come in and show me what he did. And sometimes I was like, wow, dude, you're over where I learned. So it's very impressive. So he was teaching me that, which is really exciting. So I look forward to seeing what he does in the future in the year. So our outstanding advanced math student award, Ephraim Neal. And next up for the awards for medals is Kel uh, Kelly Robinson. Can I have Stetson Gilbert come up here, please? So, from the first day I met Stetson, he was one of those students that wanted to test me. Um, um, being new to the area, he always wanted to know if I knew what I was talking about. Um, so he tested me every day. Um, he was one of those students that excelled in welding. Um, once I gave him a project, he would usually excel in that project and want something new. Um, eventually I ran out of projects, so he bring his own projects in. So some of those projects would be uh, kind of out there in left field. Uh, we had to think about it. We'd have to do some engineering. Um, but we eventually got them done and we made them. Some of them were just uh, out there, way out there. Um, and I'm not an engineer, so I couldn't help him there. But for the most part, he was one of those guys that would excel in everything I gave him. And that is why I chose him. He was one of those students that got to um, TIG welding, and that's why I made this trophy um, for that individual that got furthest in the class. And that's why I chose Stetson for the outstanding manufacturing welder student this year. So next up is Paul Riss. Paul Dunsmore and John Chris. Sorry. Can we have Caitlin Place and, and Stephen Evans right for you and take the stage, please? I wanted to uh, take some time tonight to discuss the accomplishments of Mr. Stephen Evans Renteria here taking the stage. Stephen is one of the most outstanding uh, musicians in both the choral and band department this year. Um, it started last year when he finally came to school here and he began excelling immediately both in the band and choir programs. He hungered for more musical knowledge. In fact, I think music is probably the only thing that he does uh, besides his other classes, but um, even on the weekends, all he does, and uh, we continue to see just constant improvement from him, both in voice and on his trombone as well. Um, this past fall, he was one of the drum majors in the marching band with uh, Gene, Gene Crompton, and those two together completely transformed the drum major position to a position that actually enabled me, as the band director, to step aside and allow my students to run the band and really get a different perspective on what um, we were actually trying to do as a band, and it was extraordinarily helpful. Um, and uh, both him and Gene have set a new uh, bar for what our drum major position looks like next year in the marching band. So I am eternally grateful for having them realize what that position could actually do. Um, throughout the course of this year, the wind ensemble and the chamber choir have grown tremendously under Stephen's leadership. Um, I truly believe that he had, both him and Caitlin are some of the main reasons why both of those groups um, are going to stay this year. Um, and for the band, for the first time in 23 years, I came to find out today. So, the huge part of And last thing with Stephen, he wants to go on to OSU, he wants to major in music, and obviously, and he wants to be, and he wants to become an opera singer. Um, for most people, when they say that, uh, they, they want to go be a performer and they want to be successful at it. You, and deep down, you think uh, that's probably that's, that's going to be difficult for him. I know he's going to be able to achieve that. Um, out of all the students I've ever had the privilege of working with, he has been outstanding, outstanding, 
And uh, when he sets his mind to something musically, he does achieve it. And uh, I truly believe that one day you will see him, um, if you're an opera buff, you will see him in big productions in big cities doing what he'd love to do. So without further ado, Stephen Evans Renteria. I'm very pleased to present our department's award for outstanding performing arts student to graduating senior Caitlin, Caitlin Clayson. In the past two years, Caitlin Clayson has sang in four different choirs, and she has established herself as a valuable, respected leader in every ensemble she's been a part of. Even from the first week that I began teaching here at Crimson High School, Caitlin proved to be an important ally in building the program for it is today. She is a remarkably consistent, professional, hardworking, and talented young woman. And more importantly, she deeply cares about the people she lives with and works with. She is used to her skills as a virtuosic soprano, competent pianist, and versatile actress to bring beauty, inspiration, and excellence to our music community. Caitlin has also served as my student teaching assistant in several classes and has been an invaluable help to me. She has organized and digitalized our core library, performed countless tasks for the betterment of our program, and was a student conductor for the concert choir last year. This year, Caitlin sang in the Allstate Honor Choir and All Northwest Honor Choir, representing Hermeson High School as one of the best high school sopranos in the state. I have been most impressed with the way Caitlin has served as the soprano section leader for our most advanced ensemble, the Hermeson High School Chamber Choir. Caitlin leads with a level of care, attention to detail, selflessness, and professionalism that is rare at any age. She is conscientious of the needs and abilities of the fellow singers and leads them in such a way that their dignity is honored and their best is brought forth. Caitlin, you are a student who I can trust completely, whose proactive help I can depend on in his opinion, I value. You've grown so much as a musician and as a leader, and you've forged a legacy of excellence you appears to really look up to. I'm deeply proud of you, and I'm very happy to present you this award, recognizing your outstanding musicianship and character. student, Edith, Edith has led by example with her positive and respectful personality. Edith is focused on her education and determined to pursue a career in the medical field. In a department that has several hundred students, uh, it is these reasons that makes Edith Polito one of two outstanding LP students this year. Congratulations. Mr. Sanders has this to say about Valerie Bees. Valerie has been nominated for the recognition for her efforts in physical education. She has been in body shop for the entire school year. Her work ethic and positive attitude has been second to none. Regardless of how difficult the workout is or how difficult the day has been, you can count on Valerie to do her best. She is a consistent leader by example. Thank you for helping make fifth period body shop a great class.
Next to present, Ms. Alessia Davies for science. Science Department, I'd like to ask um, Rachel Stone and Andrea Gisbert to, uh, to come up. of her current science teacher, um, Ms. Lisa Fry. So Andrea has taken as many science courses as she can, having earned one of the top grades in advanced chemistry as a sophomore and participating in science camp for two years. She actively pursues courses both within the school day and outside of the school day, including summers that will help, will help her to reach her goal to become a biomedical engineer and eventually earning an MD in Dermatology or Oncology. Personally, as a sophomore in my Act Physical Science class, um, Andrea was always willing to assist her peers and especially help me as a first-year teacher, so I appreciate that. Um, it is my honor to award her the best upperclassman science student teacher, or, sorry, student of the year. <laughs> of uh, Rachel's science teacher, Mr. Zion Silver. Uh, Rachel Stone is an exemplary science student. She's not only a highly intelligent student, um, which exemplifies in her perfect grade, but she's also an extremely outstanding person to be around. She's the type of student that is more than willing to help other students understand complex material and provides assistance to anyone who asks for it. Her interest in science is also a quality that separates her from the rest of the students. She's the type of person that seeks knowledge and understanding of the natural world around her. A few of her positive traits include her tireless work ethic, her compassion for her classmates, her outgoing and cheerful nature, and her rigor rigorous level of organization. In short, she is everything a science teacher could ask for in a student. And it's my great honor to award her the best underclassman science student teacher of the year. I'd now like to introduce Mr. Ethan McDonald and Mr. Aaron Davis. We would like to ask Mr. Judy Thacker and Mr. Andy Mendoza to please come to the stage. <laughs> These two incredibly handsome gentlemen are the recipients of the Outstanding Student in Social Arts and Sciences. I'd like to start by talking about Mr. Mendoza. Uh, I got the pleasure of meeting Andy last year as he took my class in International Relations. Uh, I heard fantastic things about the level of effort and the intensity that Andy brought to the social sciences in his house classes, uh, doing well both in world studies and in U.S. history prior. Uh, but Andy got a taste of international relations and loved it so much, he came back to TA for me. He also came back again and took an independent advanced study in global issues, in which he did collegiate level reading and just knocked it out of the park, uh, always formulating incredible theses, uh, defending them with evidence, and just really excelling. He also took advanced U.S. history even after completing regular U.S. history and has done a fantastic job with Mr. Harshberger, who would have loved to have been here to speak about Andy as well. Uh, also, just basically uh, screaming out about the incredible merits of this young man as a social arts and science student. Uh, Andy really has a choice to go a lot of different directions and be incredibly successful in the future. And I'm really excited to see what this young man will do. Andy Mendoza. Uh, 
Uh, it's my honor to present J.D. Packer with the other uh, outstanding students in the Social Studies uh, Department. Uh, I personally nominated J.D. Uh, I didn't ask anybody else in my, in my department because uh, I didn't really care what they said. So, uh, but I've had the honor to have J.D. for three years, and there's, there's a lot of kids in, uh, in the audience right now that, that could be up here as well that I've had good experiences with. But for some reason, J.D., for a lot of reasons, but uh, J.D. stood out over the years, and uh, I'm really excited to see you know, what his future holds, he's got, you know, his name's all over this this pamphlet here for a lot of other different awards, and so uh, I was just excited to be able to nominate him for social studies. And uh, he's been a great addition, he's, he's great with other uh, students, he helps out, uh, not even when asked. Uh, he asks me and, and helps out lots of questions, you know, with a lot of questions in the class. And it's been a true honor to have J.D. in class, and like I said, I'm real excited to see what he has to offer in the future. Thank you. I need uh, Daniel Montalongo and Antonio Mendoza Bedoya to come up. The recipients of the Special Programs Award are students that demonstrate the Bulldog Way. These students are respectful, they're motivated, they have good attendance, and they strive to progress academically. Our first recipient is Daniel Montalongo. Daniel was nominated by Mr. Williams, who has him in his learning lab class. Daniel is a freshman and is a very hard worker. He truly wants to succeed academically. And for a freshman, making that transition to high school, sometimes that's hard to do, to set that goal and keep aiming for it. But he's done a very good job. Daniel passed all of his classes first semester and is dedicated to making sure this happens again this next semester. He exhibits a willingness to help others be successful in their endeavors. For these reasons, we at the Special Programs Department chose Daniel Montalongo as recipient of one of the Special Programs Awards. recipient told me he was not coming today, but I'm glad to see he changed his mind. His name is Antonio Mendoza Bedoya. Tony is dedicated and hardworking, and he does an awesome job using his time wisely. He has grown into a mature sense of responsibility for his schoolwork and his academic success. Tony has a very strong ability and willingness to help other kids in the class. And in the class that I have him, he is uh, one of the upperclassmen, and he rises to the occasion frequently and helps the underclassmen with the freshmen. So that is an attribute that definitely is to your advantage. He has been a very positive role model for those younger kids. For those reasons, Antonio Mendoza Bedoya is our second recipient. Hi, I'm here to present the Visual Arts Awards. Can I please have Genesis Nabre Compost and Bradley uh, Gamble to the stage? Uh, we have two young ladies receiving this award tonight. Our first underclassman award is uh, Bradley Gamble. Her work is displayed outside right now in the two display cases. Uh, the things that she does is very whimsical. It's a breath of fresh air. Um, for somebody that's generally pretty quiet and doesn't want to be put in front of a crowd or on top of the stage, I didn't talk to right now. Um, she does fantastic work and it, it, she expresses it through her drawings, I guess is what you want to say, because that's what we do as artists, we draw and paint. Um, and so what she does is amazing. Uh, I'm excited to see that she's finally developing into her own artist and has her own style and her own unique uh, re representation of what she thinks art is. And it's, uh, it's truly an honor for me to give her the Underclassman Artist Visual Art Award this year. Thank you. Um, Genesis is 
our senior this year. Uh, it's a little bit different. Her work is a little bit more bold. Uh, it's a little more dark. Uh, at the same time, very, uh, I don't know if there's a better word to say girly, uh, but that's it's flowers, I mean, so <laughs> it's girly. Uh, but at the same time, her, her, her skill level and uh, the, the ability she has to put time into every piece that she does and spend the hours that it takes to finish an artwork is, uh, is something that a lot of artists struggle with at a young age. And uh, the fact that she could come in, she comes in after school, before school, and work uh, independently on her own, and is always striving to learn more, uh, is a great accomplishment for somebody that's trying to become uh, a person or someone in the art world, which is very tough to do uh, as it is. So the fact that she has the attributes at a young age is very promising for her, and I'm uh, honored to give her the Senior uh, Visual Arts Award. Um, next from the language world, uh, we have Heather Sherman and uh, Kristen Dutton. But um, she is also willing to go and help students who are less enthusiastic, um, which makes me happy because um, sometimes teachers can't hit every single kid. Like we try really hard to connect with everybody, but sometimes, um, sometimes we need a little help. And I really appreciate Mackenzie for that. So I want to say thank you so much, and you're fabulous. <laughs> And it's my pleasure to award Mr. Alex. Um, in my Spanish 4 class, typically the biggest challenge for most students is the Spanish-only environment. Uh, but Alex has not viewed this opportunity with the same kind of trepidation that many other students do, um, but rather with really, <laughs> truly great excitement. He's extremely enthusiastic about speaking Spanish. He actually sticks to the Spanish-only rule while he's in class. And he often even continues that practice outside of class, speaking with those of us teachers who can speak Spanish or speaking even with his friends. Uh, he truly wants to communicate the full measure of his ideas, and he's constantly striving to learn and to practice in order to do that. I have no doubt that he is heading off to college as somebody who's extremely capable of conversing very intelligently about a lot of great thoughts and ideas in two languages rather than just one and that he's going to contribute to a lot of different communities because of his skills. It's been a joy to watch Alex grow on his journey, uh, starting in day one of Spanish one and ending now where he is today. I feel his hard work has really paid off. I'm so proud of who he is and the skills he's developed. And you're gonna represent our high school and our language department really well wherever life takes you. So Alex, congratulations. about a 15 minute intermission, so if you would like to head out those doors, there are desserts for you to enjoy, and then you can come back in here in a few minutes. Thank you all.
Hey, they left testing, the line open this time. Testing, testing. Yeah, Mike K caught me. He said, he goes, good move. <laughs> Give me one more. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we could have been here at 7 o'clock. That one's ready, he needs to get out and put him He's a big boy.
with that, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and get started with the second portion of our program this evening. It's been a privilege to work with the fine students being awarded tonight and the dedicated professionals here at Hermiston High School. Serving, mentoring, teaching, and inspiring these students to pursue excellence and work hard and take pride in all that they do. This is our fourth year at Hermiston High School recognizing our program completers, and we're thrilled to announce that this year we will present 119 individual program awards today. We'll have honors in six areas. Agricultural, Food, and Natural Resource Systems, Arts, Information, and Communications, Business and Management, Family, Consumer Sciences, and Human Resources, Industrial and Engineering Systems, and Health Sciences. Some of you may be wondering what a program of study is and why is that a significant academic accomplishment. At Hermiston High School, we strive to provide students with career-relevant preparation in a rigorous academic format in order to prepare every student for success as they take the next steps toward pursuing a fulfilling profession. Our program of study completers must meet the following three criteria. One, HHS students who choose to pursue a program of study must earn at least a B in six required courses specifically aligned to ensure that they have a breadth of knowledge and experience in the chosen area of study. Second, each student must complete a capstone assessment demonstrating the knowledge and skill that they have acquired from their studies and experiences in their, in their chosen program. And third, each student must complete an application and be approved through an exit review process by the designated program director. Our awardees should be proud and confident that they have the necessary skills and the knowledge to take the next steps, whether it is in industry or some form of post-secondary education. With this said, we will now transition towards our program directors and come up to the podium and present and congratulate their students on this accomplishment. Our first program of study, Agricultural Food and Natural Resource Systems. J.C. Barron. Sandy Britt. Alexis Gaddy. Chase Carlson. Taylor Castle Bradshaw. Riley Manson. Casey McLeod. Anastasia Morton Thorson. Mackenzie Phillips. Jordan Smith. Ashley White. Brian Ward. Our next program, Arts, Information, and Communications. <laughs> Naomi Aguilar, Music Color. Aldo Alvarez. Visual Arts. Lindsay Anderson, Media Arts and Visual Arts. Adriana Venom, Visual Arts. Nicholas Carter, Instrumental. Timmy Shusansky, sorry, I'm right there. Where's Mr. Keith on the ad? Sorry, Timmy. Kayla Clayson, Cole. Jeannie 
Crompton, instrumental. Stephen Evan Retriever, choral and instrumental. C. Wally Corona, media arts. Giovanni Gallo, instrumental. Kayla Diesel, choral. Bailey Eason, Media Arts. Anthony Green, Media Arts. Katie Harmon, Visual Arts. Brianna Hughes, Instrumental. Alan Humphrey, The Fourth, Choral and Instrumental. Brianna Kessler, Visual Arts. Rachel Nielsen, Arts. Olivia Knossi, Instrumental. Matthew Lede, Choral. Shane Lovejoy, Instrumental. Audrey Martinez, Coral. Kayla Misha, Instrumental. Ashley Mosher, Media Arts. Genesis Navrante Campos, Visual Arts. Angeles Padilla Vila, Instrumental. Benjamin Parsons, Coral. Tim Floyd, Instrumental. Rebecca Wise, Coral. And our next program here, Business and Management. Adriana Asio, Business and Management Administration. <laughs> Becky Alanis, Hospitality and Tourism. <laughs> Perlina Anuris Flores, Finance. Maria Avila Andrews, Business Management Administration, Finance, and Hospitality and Tourism. Gloria Vesteros, Marketing. Ashley Banker, Business Management Mid Admin, and Finance. Maria Baumeister, Business Management and Administration. Christine Bivens, Business Management and Administration, Finance and Hospitality and Tourism. Tatiana Brock, Finance and Marketing. <laughs> Timmy, come on back. <laughs> Finance. <laughs> Yola Davis, Business Management Administration.
Onions and more pain. Savannah Diaz, Finance. Elena Moore, Emma, Finance. Ashley Estabrook, Business Management and Admin, Hospitality and Tourism.
Kayleen Wheeler Finance. Our next program of study will be Family Consumer Science. Oh, Mr. Berger is going to speak for a moment. I've grown because all my students know it's never for a moment. I would like to give some money away right now and I'll read just briefly what that means. For the past seven years, our business students have been working and uh, growing our very own coffee smoothie business called JavaDoc. Students are able to enroll in the third year of accounting, called, a class called JavaDoc Financial Management. The students in this class take on a management role all decision-making responsibilities and anything else that goes with the business. Through the hard work and dedication of this year's 11 managers and the many before them, the business was in a position to use some of the profits and give back award scholarships for those that have completed the finance program of study. All the students who successfully completed the finance program of study, all the people that you just saw walk across the stage with, with, the, with the, the name for finance, were eligible for this year's scholarship. My advisory committee for the finance program of study reviewed the applicants and selected five students, uh, four of which are here today, and I'd like to call them up and give them their award letter. Uh, receiving a $350 scholarship is Christine Bivens. <laughs> also receiving a $350 scholarship, Savannah Diaz. Receiving a scholarship for $975, McKinsey Jewell. And also receiving a scholarship for $975, Perlita and Zervis Flores. Much quicker than what we all thought. <laughs> all right, back to our program completers, our family consumer science and human resources. Christine Bivens, human resources. Johnson, Human Resources. Sierra Simon, Human Resources. And our next program of study, Industrial and Engineering Systems. <laughs> Michael Anderson, Engineering. Caesar Hernandez Soares, Construction. Cameron Cahill, Engineering. Michael Cabrera.
Ivan Carrillo Construction. Christian Corona Construction. Juan Fernandez Construction. Matthew Gilbert Construction. Jesus Fernandez Construction. Cody Kyle Construction. Natasha Anderson, Construction. <laughs> Christian Arvillo, Construction. Dominic Brindle, Construction. <laughs> Matthew Burton, Construction. Leo Construction <laughs> Ricardo Mendoza Armenta Construction Oscar Mendoza Rodriguez Construction Sal Monteargo Construction Colton Murray Construction Damon Kurakani, Construction. <laughs> Anthony Cerulean, Engineering. George Westfall, Construction. Our next program of study, Health Sciences. Preston Bailey, Health Sciences. <laughs> Brittany Byer, Health Sciences. <laughs> Chris 
Christine Bivens, Co-Science. Edwina Noah, Ina, Co-Science. Madison Espinoza, Health Science. <laughs> Diana Colbe, Health Science. <laughs> Kyler McGinney, Health Sciences. Mishra, Health Sciences. <laughs> Ashley Mosher, Health Sciences. <laughs> Yanari Arales, Health Sciences. Amanda, Amanda Pollock, Health Sciences. <laughs> Athan Reed, Health Sciences. <laughs> Maria Ruas, Health Services. Smith, Health Services. Sage Smith, Health Services. Perla Bergas Pena, Health Services. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round. That is the conclusion of our program for cleaners. Excellent job. We're very excited to see you guys in your next step as you head out into the real world. So enjoy. Now it's my honor to go ahead and introduce Mr. Tim Zacharias. Thank you very much. It is my honor to uh, present the 8th Annual Circle of Excellence Awardees. If they would come forward at this time as I call their name and assemble here uh, beside the stage uh, as I explain this award. Uh, Maria Avila, Evelyn Bartley, Tyler McCabe, John David Thacker Jr., Tyler McCammy, Taylor, Katzel, Bradshaw, Timo Tate, Erzanowski. The Circle of Excellence Award is an award that uh, begins in the springtime uh, with uh, teacher nominations, followed by a couple of weeks of teacher comment and evaluation and then a final vote uh, on the scholarship winner. Uh, the Breakfast Colonus has partnered with the Hermsen High School faculty for the last three years to award a $1,200 scholarship 
uh, for the one that is chosen uh, ultimately as a scholarship winner. The circle of excellence is made up of several criteria, attitude, discipline, vision, compassion, consistency, work ethic, team player, role model. A couple of comments that guide the uh, instructors as they go through this selection process uh, reads as follows. Under discipline, consistently does the right thing in the right way regardless of whether they're being watched or not. Under compassion, cares about, cares about people not just with feelings, but regularly demonstrates a mental focus on the well-being of others and performs acts of service to meet the needs they observe without demanding a claim. Team player, clearly demonstrates an attitude and action that humanity as a whole is where individual contributions have meaning. They understand that their excellence is good and praiseworthy because of, it, of how it makes everyone around them better. And finally, role model. They can be pointed to as exhibiting these attributes as examples for others to follow and learn from at any moment in time. So after about a month's process, these are our finalists. I have uh, certificates to award them and uh, a plaque bearing their names will now be mounted in the attendance office uh, showing the finalists and the scholarship winner. For the 2015 Scholarship Awardee, Tim McKenna. We can recognize them all one more time as they exit the stage, please. I will turn the podium back over to Dr. Fred Miyako for the inaugural recognition of the Distinguished Alumni Award. Thank you. It is indeed a privilege to be here, students to recognize and support you and uh, celebrate your successes. This year we're inaugurating a new award, the Distinguished Alumnus Award for Hermiston High School. It's our intent to try and identify someone who has graduated from Hermiston High School previously, attended Hermiston High School for at least two years during their high school experience, those last two years prior to graduation. Someone who is a leader in his or her chosen field or profession with a proven record of at least 15 years of verifiable and successful professional experience. Someone who is a strong supporter and contributor to community service. Someone who is willing to serve as a role model for you. Someone who is a model citizen with a clean background. And someone who has strong references and endorsements and a record of accomplishment. You know, Hermiston High School graduates, you know, as you're, as you're walking through these hallways, you know that you complete a rigorous program of study. This serves as a foundation for further achievement in a variety of careers and professions. As a result, Many of you will go on. We want you to know that there are those who have gone before you who are graduates who serve in critical roles in business, in industry, in academia, and in other professions, government, throughout the United States and across the world. The Distinguished Alumnus Award is intended to recognize this kind of accomplishment and inspire you current students to pursue excellence in everything that you do to pursue achievement in your own endeavors. And so it's my privilege tonight to introduce to you our first distinguished alumnus tonight, Mr. Stuart Allen. Stuart, you can I'm going to 
embarrass Stuart a little bit here in front of you. Uh, Stuart is a 1980 graduate of Hermiston High School. He is a, a, long, a lifelong entrepreneur who started his first paper route at the tender age of nine. He held many other entrepreneurial uh, positions throughout his life. You can see them there included in the bio that's been included in your program. While here at Hermiston High School, he played football, basketball, tennis for Hermiston, and served as student body treasurer and vice president. He was also president of the Future Business Leaders of America during his junior and senior years. And then after graduation, Stewart attended Blue Mountain Community College before continuing on to the University of Oregon, where he earned his Bachelor of Science in Finance and Political Science. While at the U of O, Stewart spent his last quarter of st school studying abroad in London, and then he earned his Juris Doctor at Texas Wesleyan University and became an attorney. During law school, his tennis team won the Texas USTA, US Tennis Association Championships and advanced to the national semifinals in Palm Springs. Stuart has gone on to do several successful things in his uh, career beyond that. He's a certified trust and financial advisor. He's served at several large banks and trust departments in Oregon. And then in 2001, Stuart founded Allen Trust Company and Allen Capital Management on the principles of being local, remaining independent, and providing the highest quality, personalized service possible. Allen Trust Company is the only independent financial trust company in Oregon. And he has enjoyed so much success that he has gone on to add offices in Washington and Alaska to better serve the Pacific Northwest and his clients throughout this region. Stuart's proud to be from Eastern Oregon. He gives back in serving uh, both professionally and personally in many capacities. He looks for ways to connect education leaders with business leaders to support public-private partnerships that benefit students. Here are a couple of examples. He serves on the board of Oregon Bankers Association Education Foundation and on the board of the Lincoln High School Foundation in his own home area. In addition, Stewart is a member of the executive committee in the Oregon State Bar Estate Planning and Administration Section and a member and past chair of the Trust Committee of the Oregon Bankers Association. Stewart is always on the go. Even in his spare time, he hates to sit still. He's gone and traveled to 43 different countries across the world. He uh, has enjoyed and continues to enjoy working with his children and supporting their sports programs, coaching his children's uh, sports programs like football, basketball, and tennis. And he successfully completed the Portland Marathon in 1997 and still plays tennis at the 4.5 level. We're delighted to have his wife, Sarah, here with him tonight to celebrate and be recognized with this honor. Sarah, if you would also stand to be recognized, please give Mr. Stuart Allen and Ms. Uh, Sarah Allen a big round of applause. speaker at graduation. We're very excited to have him joining the team and then he will also be here at Hermiston High School next year a couple of times to help speak on leadership and how to develop and look towards uh, career planning as uh, students look to the future and their next steps. We look forward to partnering with Stuart over the coming year to, to learn from his wisdom and experience. Again, thank you Stuart for your willingness to serve in this role. Please, one more time, a big round of applause. <laughs> Well, it's also my pleasure to introduce to you the uh, Medallion Honors uh, Program. Uh, this uh, specific award represents really the Honors Diploma. Now, Hermiston High School awards an Honors Diploma for special recognition for our students. It is the most prestigious award at Hermiston High School, representing the highest levels of academic achievement. So beyond the standard 24 credits that are required for graduation, those students who earn the honors medallion had to earn an additional three credits for a total of 27 credits. They had to maintain a cumulative grade point average of 3.5 or higher. 
They had to meet state benchmarks in reading, math, science, and writing. And they had to complete math at least to the Algebra II level. Additionally, beyond this, they had to also earn at least 12 honors credits through either dual credit, advanced placement, honors designation, or other approved courses in at least four different areas of these different departments that you've seen represented here tonight. This is truly an extraordinary accomplishment that our students who are getting this medal so richly deserve. So Mr. Bacon, if you'd help us with calling names and awarding these and continuing these honors. All right, at this time I'll have our counselors come up and join me as we go through the names. I'm Jackie Brandau. I'm one of the counselors, and I have the pleasure of announcing the first group of Honors Medallion students. So when I say your name, if you could come up on stage. Carlita Anzuras Flores. Her parents are Maria and Raul. Um, she, um, her activities are speech and debate and ASB Leadership. She is in Generation <coughs> College and also Destination College. She plans to major in Accounting at Portland State University or Pacific University. Next is Tristan Bailey. <laughs> Tristan isn't here, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about him for a second anyway. His parents are William and Edie Bailey. He's employed at Home Depot. He's a, in student leadership. He's also the ASB treasurer his junior and senior year, and he plans to attend Oregon State University. <laughs> Madeline Bartley. <laughs> Madeline are Renee and Matthew Bartley. She's involved in drama, speech, speech and debate, marching band, and pep band. She's in the National Honor Society, and she plans to attend Portland State University to complete a bachelor's degree in Chinese. Hey. No, I'm not going to have one more. This Mary Bowmeister. are Marvin and Kathy Jensen. Mary is in speech and debate. She also is the Science Club historian and president. She's in Knowledgeable Key Club Generation College. And she plans to attend college to double major in chemistry and accounting. Eventually, she would like to own her own business, preferably green material science. Is Baby, Bailey Bicknell here? Okay. Um, Bailey's parents are Tandy and Roy, Roy Bicknell. She's in cheerleading, tennis, and track and field, and she plans to finish her AAOT at BMCC and then transfer to Oregon State University. <laughs> Brianna Wolf. Brianna's parents are Bradley and Robbie. Um, she does volleyball and tennis. Brianna is an FFA member and is in the and is the Green Hand president as well. She plans to earn her bachelor's degree of science at Oregon State University and then earn her Doctor of Pharmacy after completing the pharmacy doctorate program at Oregon State. She hopes to become a compound pharmacist. And lastly, for my group, I have Dylan Zimmerly. <laughs> Dylan's parents are Justin and, Chris and Christy Zimmerly. He plays basketball. He's in the National Honor Society, also in speech and debate. 
and he is the National Honor Society President and Historian. He plans to attend Oregon State University and get his Master's in Mechanical Engineering with a minor in Spanish. He would like to open his own engineering firm to work with robotics. Next is Councillor Maggie Hughes Boyd.
valedictorian Taylor Cockrell Bradshaw. Of Elizabeth and Lucas Bradshaw. She is a member of FFA. She is the chapter president and secretary. She plans to attend Oregon State's Honor College and major in biology. Then will transfer to a medical school to study neurology. <laughs> Michaela Manuel. Daughter of Jennifer and Jim Costey. She is a participant in track and field, choir, outdoor school counselor, and various church events. She is a part of the Spanish Club, Science Club, Book Club, Vice President, and Speech and Debate. She plans to major in English, become an English teacher, and travel a lot. <laughs> Valedictorian Alex Meyer. of Lynn and Cindy Myers. He is involved in speech and debate. He has taken various AP classes, including AP Art History, AP World History, and AP European History on Hermiston Online. He is a part of Destination College and the Drama Club. Alex plans to become an editor or a lawyer and attending a university in the future. <laughs> Valedictorian Kyler McCammy. Son of Clay and Crystal McCammy. He is involved in football, basketball, baseball, and ASB leadership. Uh, he was sophomore secretary and also was senior treasurer and secretary. Kyler plans to go on a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints after he graduates. Roger <laughs> Mishra. Daughter of John and Lorena Mishra. Kajal is a part of marching band, pep band, jazz band, and pit orchestra. She is a key club secretary, she is in the knitting club, she is the vice president, and she is a science club member. She plans to study Spanish, Japanese, and music at Oregon State University and either teach language or pursue professional instrumental performance. Ashley Moser. <laughs> Daughter of Ron and Pam Moser, Ashley is involved in volleyball and softball. She is a member of the National Honor Society. She plans to attend university studying medicine and hopes for a career in the medical field. <laughs> I now introduce Melody Lustios. Valedictorian, Timoteusz Szanowski. <laughs> His activities are wind ensemble, jazz band, marching band. He's the Nitty Nights founder and president, speech and debate president, science club secretary, Spanish club secretary, and is a part of the Knowledge Bowl team. His plans after high school include going into neuroscience or linguistics. Parsons. His parents are Kelly Parsons and Danielle Conwell. He's involved in choir, drama. He is also the bass section leader for chamber choir. He plans to move to Spokane and pursue their community theater program. Amanda Pollock, who is not here tonight. Her parents are John and Bafferty Pollock. She's a part of the dance team as a captain, and she plans on going to Lynn Benton Community College after high school. <laughs> Michael Potts. Parents are Steve and Gladys Potts. He is a part of the ASB leadership 
and Football and National Honor Society. He was the freshman co-president, school board representative, junior secretary treasurer, and senior vice president. His future plans are to go to Arizona State University to study to become a medical Her parent is Brandy George. She's been a part of Tennis, the Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership Seminar, uh, where she was a participant and a volunteer. She's also the secretary for National Honor Society and is involved in Outdoor Club. She's also been the sophomore class president. She is going to be attending Whitman College this fall to take a pre-medicine, to take her pre-medicine pre- prerequisites, and minor in Spanish. She aspires to become a doctor of radiology. <laughs> Jordan Smith. Her parents are Roger and Danny Smith. She's been involved in track, the astronomy club. She's the F FCCLA senior representative and FFA Greenham secretary and chapter sentinel. Her future plans are to go to EOU, possibly transfer to a school in Tennessee in the last year or two, obtain her master's in nursing, then apply at the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital as a pediatric oncology nurse. Smart. His parents are Kelly and Nancy Swart. He's involved in cross country, track, jazz band, wind ensemble. Kristen Hurricanes, junior, or peer and juvenile tutor. He plans to attend NNU to major in primary education and minor in Spanish. And he wants to run for the distance team and play tenor saxophone in the jazz program at NNU. Valedictorian Tyler Way to Camper. His parents are Scott and Beth Way to Camper. He's been involved in varsity tennis, wind ensemble, jazz band, and the robotics has been the robotics club team captain. He is also our senior class president. He plans to attend Seattle Pacific University and study engineering. Madison Welch. Her parents are Jerry and Connie Welch. She's a part of the Varsity Girls Golf Team, has been all four years of high school. She's also a member of Destination College. She plans to attend and play collegiate golf at Concordia University, Portland, while pursuing a degree in accounting and a minor in Spanish. And last tonight, but certainly not least, Kayleen Wheeler. Her parents are Elizabeth and Phil, Phil Wheeler. She's involved in softball, basketball, volleyball, National Honor Society treasurer. She's our current ASB president. She was the assistant ASB activities coordinator last year. She plans on attending Oregon State University, where she will be pursuing a degree in business management. Bacon. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming out to support the students tonight. They have worked hard. It's an exciting time for them as spring term semester kind of narrows down and the crunch time hits. So enjoy the evening, look forward to the future, and thank you all for coming. Have a good night.